I was still preparing for the bar, but not like I should have. This time I felt like I've been studying and there's no time like the current. So let's just take it and get it over with. This is my, what I called my last shot. And it was really- Welcome back to hanging out with successful bar exam takers. And I am very excited to be with a brand new successful Alabama UBE bar taker, Chris McCrane. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm excited. I just said to you before we went live to record that I really wanted to get this interview out because I think in a COVID world, it's really important to have some good news. And you really got some good news this week, didn't you? Yes, I finally passed the bar. It's been a two-year process, but I made it. That's great. We're so proud of you and pleased for you. I think maybe a good place for us to start today would be to just have you tell us a little bit about your story and what the journey has been in taking the bar exam, because this wasn't your first time taking the test. No, not at all. We'll back up a little bit further than that. I started years ago thinking about going to law school and made some friends, and they got talking to him and says, yeah, you should probably go. I had six years in law enforcement. And they were talking about me maybe going into prosecution or doing these different types of jobs. And in this scenario, I went to law school. I had already had one. Then first bar came along. First bar. I did not complete. In the Scantron, I missed a question or two. Had to erase the Scantron, go back, start over. And I told my professor about it. And he said, well, you failed that one. And it sank in. I got the results and I had failed it. The second one, the second time, I, February bar starts to roll around. I missed my application date. So I didn't get a chance to take the February bar. July rolls around, take that bar exam. And I refused to basically write essays. I wanted to try to make my score multiple choice go up. That didn't work out. And I think that's the point in time I contacted you. You came in and you had, your scores were, you know, good on multiple choice. You were having trouble on the, the written work. And you were still a pretty good distance away from the passing score that you need. And in Alabama, it's a 260. That's passing. Okay. So what happened then? After that, I started using your program. One time where I scored once again, the third bar, I scored a 139.6. I was four tenths of a point from testing out in Alabama for multiple choice. I didn't write my essays and I wasn't planning to write essays at that point in time or practice writing them. And I realized I've got to start practicing essays. And I did, and I continued to study the MBE side that I knew if I could make up more points on the MBE still that I wouldn't have to stress as much about the essay, but I still wrote essays. And uh, this time I got a notification. I went on 146.6 on the MBE side. And I, after that notification come through that I passed the bar exam, I was ecstatic to say the least. <laughs> yeah, I bet you were. We'll talk about that moment in, in, a, in a few minutes, but that's a big deal. So your overall score then turned out to be what? Somewhere around 266, I want to say. Maybe okay. 264, 266. Yeah. And at those numbers, not only do you pass the Alabama bar, but you pass into and can wave into some other jurisdictions and states. How did that make you feel? It's a long journey. You had to go through a lot to get there. What's the feeling at that moment? Oh, man. Uh, a sigh of relief for one. put my life on hold and I step back into the construction world. You can't. For me, having a law degree is basically useless until you pass the bar exam because nobody will hire you. Nobody wants to speak to you because you haven't passed the bar. I talked to, talk to probably, if I had to guess, probably a range of six different attorneys about coming to work with them just to learn the trade and start getting acclimated to working. They told me, we're not going to hire you because you've already been through law school you just haven't passed the bar exam, so we're not going to hire you until you do. And my life was put on hold. Yeah, and, and that's a pretty tough thing. And with a family, and, and I want to focus on this for a little bit, what was it like for your wife and your family, for you, not just going through law school, but being in this bar exam process for a couple of years? It was tough. The first time, it was devastating. The second time, I actually couldn't take the bar exam. It was even, it, it was even more of a struggle then because... 
I had to wait a little while longer. And then you miss it again and your wife, my wife's a registered nurse. So she works 12 hour shifts. I have to take care of the kids, take them to school, take them to daycare. And of course, coronavirus hit. And this is a whole another ball game now, but she had Corona patients. So we had to adjust our lifestyle here. And I just worked kind of part time in the construction world or carpentry work is what I've done in the past as well. It fell back into it so I could make money to pay our bills. And uh, it's been a little bit of stress here. I'm not going to, it's not easy, but it's life. You take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah, it was really challenging. Let's talk a little bit about taking the test in the coronavirus world because Alabama gave an in-person test. Can you talk a little bit about what that was like and, and the, the setting and sort of your feelings around that? I'll be honest with you. I felt like it was the best bar exam you could have ever sat for. Everybody was social distancing. You had a six-foot mandate, so you walked through the doors. There wasn't a lot of people standing around outside talking. Yeah, you had your Alabama students in one section talking to each other, and you had Cumberland, but it wasn't a large mangle of people. They brought you in waves, so they start bringing you in at 7.30, I want to say, or so, and then they bring a first section in, and they bring another section in. You go in and get your temperature checked. They actually allow for you to push the bar back into, I believe, sometime coming up here in a few days, October, And a friend of mine actually decided he would push back to the following bar exam because he just didn't feel like he had put enough time into studying for the bar. But going back to taking the exam, I was used to having somebody right next to me or somebody I would talk to in the process of sitting around and waiting. But this time, they tell you don't talk to people. Don't communicate about what you've seen on the exam. In prior exams, people would get together and, how did you feel about this or how did you feel about that? And you'd have to be a little rude and shun them and say, I don't really want to talk about it right now. But this time, you didn't have to worry about it. Nobody wanted to speak to you anyway. So you just come through, take the thing, and go home. (laughs) Yeah, that's nice. There were fewer people taking the exam than usual. Yeah. And the feedback I've gotten has felt more relaxed, more personal in a sense, because it was fewer people and socially distanced. Let's talk a little bit about why you decided to take the exam in July rather than taking the option that Alabama offered and that other states have offered for the later fall test. What was your reasoning for going for the test at that point? Let's back up to last year's July bar. Prior to then, my grandfather was in bad shape. He was sick, and I didn't study like I should have last year, but I took it anyway in July. As I have a law enforcement background, a friend of mine, William Beekner, was killed in May in the line of duty. And I don't think I studied much during that time frame either. I was a little concerned for his wife and stuff. And even though I hadn't really met her, I was still preparing for the bar, but not like I should have. This time I felt like I've been studying and there's no time like the current. So let's just take it and get it over with. This is my, what I called my last shot. And it was really a, a decision of, I've been studying for months for this July bar. So it's yeah. time to do it. Yeah. And how many hours a week would you say you were studying leading up to the July bar? Oh, man, probably, I would say between 40 and 45 hours. Okay. I would give myself time to, to spend time with my kids and spend time with my wife. I even took a trip in the middle of the bar for studies this time. So uh-huh. was, I didn't feel as stressed going in. And so your wife being a registered nurse, dealing with COVID patients, you're aware of the the physical risks. Did you have concerns about that going into the test? Honestly, no. I felt like the state had a pretty good plan. You know, Alabama, you go in, they want you to wear your mask, bring your hand sanitizer if you want. So as far as health risks were concerned, I was more concerned. I felt a little more concerned about being around my wife than I did other people. But we found out that she's pregnant prior to that. I built her a containment room in this house. So when she come in, I had it depressurized because I had a construction background. I depressurized the room and had her, you know, go in there and take your clothes off and wash your stuff and don't come out and see us until it's over. So uh, that's, a, that's a novel. Yes, that's a novel approach. Congratulations. Uh, so this will be child number three. Yes, he's yeah. due 
another boy. He was due in January. That's great. What a great season this has been for, for you and your family. I, I want to focus a little bit on what you did differently in studying for the July exam and why when you come close as you did previously, I remember talking with you at that point and you were discouraged, but you weren't going to give up. And, and we talked about the need to do things differently. Can you talk a little bit about what that meant for you in your situation? I took, and we can all talk about my maps, and we can talk about the different programs that you offer. But for me, it was taking in the reality of focusing on the subjects that I had done the worst in on the prior administrations. And it was a consistent thing. I knew that real property I struggled in. I knew that I had a bias in criminal law because I had a criminal law background. I knew that people don't get prosecuted or they work out plea bargainings and things like that in real life. So I had to separate myself from the black letter law in the way the real world works. For me, it was going back to those areas and spending another two weeks on, and I had the time to do it. So I took that opportunity to focus on those weak areas. And I think that's what, what put me in this realm. Yeah, you, you mentioned mind maps. Did you use mind maps? Mind maps. Okay. And that's something we talk about in the course a lot. What was the impact of using mind maps for you this time around? They did have a couple of tricks in the essay portion. I, you probably heard about them. They gave a question involving real property along with some other constitutional law type player to it. So it gives you an opportunity, in my mind, to connect the dots. The real property question that they proposed began as a, it was a little weird. I don't exactly remember how it went, but it was not normal. And then they got to talking about fixtures down at the bottom of it. And uh, anyhow, when I was using the mind maps, I was thinking maybe I need to go and try to connect the dots. So that was my big thing was how do these areas of law form with the rest of them? And that's what I've done. It just helped me out drawing them out. I make my notes and doodle or whatever I was doing at that point in time in, in the pages. So it was great. That's terrific. Let's talk a little bit about the multi-state exam because the way ju uh, the July test went, you took a full length 200 question MBE you had the six essays and the one performance test. Your score on the multi-state was really strong, wasn't it? Yeah, 146.6. Okay. So that means that you got probably about 138, maybe 140 raw questions correct out of the 175 that counted. Talk a little bit about your approach to answering multiple choice questions, if you would. Yeah, that's where I had to learn from the first time. When I do my multiple choice questions, I, when I read the call of question, I'm already thinking about what answers fall into these categories and it comes second nature after you've done it for so long one big thing for me was i stopped reading the question and going to the scantron what i would do taking the exam is i'd read the question and i would circle in the booklet the answer that i was going to put on the scantron and i'd do my 20 questions or 25, whatever lines up in that Scantron block. I think it was 20 questions. So I would do my 20, and then I would go and fill in a Scantron. And it saves on average about two minutes per 20 because you're not looking at the question, looking at the Scantron, going back to check that same question. You're just looking and going, looking and going. And then at the end of the 20, you just go in and block them all in. That's just the exam taking portion of it that I had to learn from the first one. The actual study of law is very pertinent, but I did probably, I'm not going to be ashamed to tell you, Jackson, I probably did 3,000 multiple choice questions. I never stopped studying them. So that was my strategy was to keep doing them. That's great. So you, you take the test. You leave the, the test site. What's your feeling at that point after two days of testing and all the, the strangeness and weirdness? What's the reaction then? Once again, I felt good, but I didn't know exactly how to feel good because I previously I had failed. Or I shouldn't say failed. I didn't pass the mark. After those two, or after this one, I went home 
my wife's like, how do you feel? And I said, I'm neutral. I said, it was some odd things they, they did in the essay portion, but I don't feel bad about it. I was in the group of people that were like, I would say, less concerned about the passing side of it this time because I had done so much work. And I said, I'm going to put it in God's hands. It's up to him whether I go or not. And so I wasn't really stressed as much about the outcome this time as I was previously. And, and what was it like when results came out? Tell us about that moment. Man, it was a sigh of relief. I probably, I think most of my neighbors could hear me. <laughs> to this moment, I don't even think it's actually sat in that I have passed the bar exam. I'll be honest with you, because it's just been a couple of days. One thing is one big sigh of relief that now I have the opportunity to go forward. Immediately after finding out, I started getting text messages from friends. Hey, congratulations. And Facebook messages. And then I went on to Facebook and I posted that I'd passed the bar exam and just an outpour of love from people. And now it's just the opportunity to put it to work. Yeah, it's a great moment for sure. What There are a lot of people who have taken and failed the bar. There are a lot of people who are concerned about taking the exam in the COVID world. What advice would you give to people who are struggling with what to do right now? What would you tell them based on where you are right now? Do not give up. One thing you have to do is you have to push forward. Accept defeat. You have been defeated. It is time now to go into the areas of which you were the weakest at or have been the weakest at over this period of time and move forward. Don't stress about the COVID it's a realistic thing. It can hurt you. It can hurt other people. But the way that they had Alabama set up, I would not be afraid to take that exam again in these situations. Yeah, I think that's really good to hear. And I think that's encouraging for people. Um, any advice you would give to people about Celebration Bar Review and about how the course worked for you? And I'm not asking you to say nice things. I just want to get your feedback because I know that's obviously a question that people want to know is what bar review course did you use and did it work for you or, or how did it work? Your materials were good. Selling materials were great. One thing I really like is just the books, the way it was laid out. So I continued to use the same books, even though that I had them marked up. I've still got them over here in my box. If I need to pull them out, I could. But the material is fantastic. Your videos are great. What I would do, I know you said, don't take notes while you're watching my videos. I couldn't help it. I still took notes. That's just my fallback because if I pull out this notebook right here, I can show you. I've got two notebooks of notes where I took them from videos. But that's just my style of studying. That I, That's just something I've grown accustomed to doing. But as far as outside of the materials, you guys have connections on Facebook. When you open up the opportunity for people to see other bar takers who haven't made it, you've even had one that I think was 20 years later, he decided to use celebration and pass the bar exam in another jurisdiction. But the words of encouragement from you guys, the podcast that you do, it is all wonderful. They're, you don't see another bar prep course that's, hey, we're here to help you. If you have questions, contact us. Then you have a group on Facebook that you can ask questions to. And the study group is wonderful. I've been a member of it from probably right after I started Celebration. And I go through and I'll read everybody's questions. I may not answer anything unless I feel positive that I'll know the answer. But just the ability to have those communications has been great to me. And then you just send out your at some point in time, I think you were doing daily notifications to me. Hey, how do you feel? Here's words of encouragement. And it's just wonderful. This is the only bar prep class. Even though I didn't buy further into the bar prep class, it was still wonderful to get those notifications, videos, feedback, just having the, the ability to get that information out there. That's great. I appreciate that. Yeah, you purchased our most economical program called the Basic Course, and then you took advantage of what we call a lifetime pass guarantee. So when you weren't successful, you were able to stay in the course, receive all the same benefits and materials, and keep studying, 
and keep working. And I think that the question that I like to ask people at this point is now looking back on all of it, was it worthwhile? In other words, now that you've gotten this past result, was it worthwhile to go through everything you had to go through to be here today? Absolutely, without a shadow of doubt. I, like I said, I've had the door closed in my face more than once about going to work for somebody. And this opens up another world of opportunities. You would have thought that going to law school, that you can still find a JD Advantage position. It's not going to happen. It, I shouldn't say it's not going to happen. It is few and far between that you're going to land a job with JD Advantage. With Celebration, it was wonderful when I started and got my books and you kept me in those live classes. Even when I got a, a bad letter in the mail, I kept that video and audio because I use my cell phone a lot to travel with. So I'll use either the internet browser. I don't know if y'all have an app out or not, a cell phone app. But yeah, no app. We don't have an app. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't find once. I wasn't sure, and I didn't ask. But I use the browser, and I use the audio portions of the browser inside Celebration to travel with, and I will listen to those areas of law in which you've already had. Some of them were over three hours in lecture. So it was good for me when I traveled my three and a half, four hour distance, and I could just listen to you talk while I'm traveling, even though I couldn't take my notes. So it was a, a wonderful situation to have access to continuously. That's great. I'm so delighted for you, Chris, and for your family. It sounds like a great opportunity, a, a great time coming for you and your, your growing family. And I'm so glad that you could be part of our course. I. You mentioned the Facebook group. I, I hope you'll stay in that group and continue to offer assistance as our passing students so often do. Any final words that you want to share with our audience? I know a lot of people are going to be really inspired by your story and what you've done, uh, but anything in particular you want to share with them before we wrap up here today? I'm going to continue to say, do not give up. Follow some of the, I follow your recommended path. You have an outline given to you to study that law to put it in practice, do it. Follow the layout in which celebration provides. You're gonna pass the bar. It's just a matter of when, and I didn't give up. So I, even though I'm a multiple taker, I didn't give up. And I think that quality of never giving up is what's gonna make you a terrific member of the bar. So I'm really proud of you and pleased for you. I'm glad that you and your family are healthy and that you've gotten this great result. Chris, I want to thank you again for sharing your story with us and, and being open about the struggle and, and the challenge. I know you're going to really encourage a lot of folks that are watching and listening. Thanks so much to all of you in our audience. Thank you for being with us. I hope this was uh, as exciting for you as it is for me to hear. And with that, we're going to go ahead and sign off. We'll be back with you again soon with another Hanging Out with a Successful Student. But for now, thanks and congratulations again, Chris. Thank you.